Hey there, welcome to the Drawing Codex. We're going to do a little drawing demo today. We're going to draw some dwarves and use that as a nice example of how to construct figures, how to construct faces, and how to think three-dimensionally when we're drawing on a two-dimensional page. Let's jump in and get started. All right, so we're going to be sketching in a sketchbook. This is a Strathmore 400 series sketchbook it is the sketch version though so it's uh, got more pages and the paper is yeah it's a little bit thin but still quite a nice uh, paper to draw on and uh, i'm just going to use some sort of black wings needable eraser i've got a pencil sharpener lying around some here and uh yeah i'm just going to do some drawing my name's tim mcburney and here at the drawing codex uh, my goal with this channel is to help you draw stuff from your imagination to draw some cool stuff from your imagination because that's kind of what i do as a job and that's what i like to talk about and that's what we're going to do in this little demo it's going to draw some dwarves so we'll start off with a few little sketches um, apologies if you see my head jam jamming into frame every now and then it's just so I can try and make sure I get really um, above this sort of drawing, make sure there's no distortions. Because again, the angle that you view your drawing from affects how sort of accurate it is. So again, just using a sort of modified Loomis method here, roughing in a face, some facial features. And we're going to use that to kind of, again, just kind of sketch around. So we'll go over a little bit more of technical stuff, um, you know, and talk about you know, some drawing tips for doing this kind of work in a little bit. I'm just warming up because I think that's one of the most important things to do. And uh, again, you know, I draw in a pretty sort of comic booky, uh, you know, stylized way, and I use these structural drawing techniques to draw stuff, you know, just from my head, where we're trying to take these things that exist in sort of three dimensions mentally and in the real world and, and draw them on uh, a bit of paper, two dimensional surface. Now, you may have seen people use uh, a Loomis method process uh, or you know a Riley method process or some sort of constructive anatomy process to create figures that's very similar to what I'm doing here except as I said I'm doing it from imagination and uh, you know that's how I think the these processes and systems are, are really sort of best used is just for yeah doing stuff from imagination I don't really see the point of using them to, to draw from reference because you can just draw it from reference so that's where I'm coming from and yeah my main goal is always just to you know try and build form understand the form and drawing in this way also really helps to uh, draw stuff from different angles if you have to redraw the same thing again and again so the real reason that I you know started drawing this way was you know, besides it sort of just being recommended is that I, I really found it useful for, from a practical standpoint, to, to actually do the type of work that I was doing. It, it solves a lot of problems for me day to day as a working artist. Um, again, there's many, many different ways to learn to draw. I like doing it this way because it just makes things easy once you kind of figure it out. So again, just using that as a base and once we've sort of got a base, I'm just going to go through and start putting in a few little sketchy marks. See if we can indicate some form here. Uh, find where that might be. Give the dwarven helmet a little bit more sort of structure so the, there's a couple of things that again I, I find really sort of helpful um, trying to find things in sort of three dimensions 
is useful, I think. Drawing through is really useful in this case. And I think something that's good to talk about is the center line. So it's using these sort of basic techniques, right, to kind of help construct figures. And that can be if you're you know, drawing cartoony, can be, it can help if you're drawing realistically, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, that's the basics. That's sort of what we're, that's sort of what we're doing. That's what I tend to be doing all day, every day. It's just constructing faces, designing faces, and this is how I do it. So again, gonna find that sphere, chop it off, find center, find the center point of that, right, of that sphere, boom, that's essentially the, right between the eyes, that's that point. Then we're gonna draw a line down to kind of represent the center of the face. And we're gonna find some proportional markers along the way. And this sort of, you know, secondary marker, right from the top of the eyes to the uh, bottom of the nose is, is kind of where I'm gonna put in that big sort of dwarven nose. Then below that, obviously we're gonna sort of have the chin around here. We can find the rough indication of where the jaw changes direction there. And then again, I'm gonna sort of work with that center line, draw the mound of the mouth there. And uh, yeah, really important to put in some of those Um, underlying features, even if we're going to put in a beard or something. So again, I'm just playing around. Let's see if we can make this character a little bit more aggressive. And again, that's really sort of looking in. We're going to have that right, that kind of moustache coming out. Right, sort of coming down, just sort of massing in those shapes, trying to make sure they're sort of separate. And again, just sort of coming out from there is going to be that kind of beard. Okay, we can sort of find some overall sort of mass for that. Got some big cheekbones. And I think, again, one of the things about sort of dwarves that's so sort of fun is that, you know, it, it's like when you see people with just a, like a giant sort of overgrown beard, their, their facial features kind of disappear a little bit, right? And uh, I think that's why often, you know, we, we sort of end up making the facial features of, of dwarves like a little bit sort of bigger is, yeah, it kind of fits with the fact that if you don't, uh, the whole sort of whole character kind of disappears a little bit. You kind of don't notice those features. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm always making the eyes fairly iconic, right? Less about, let's give that one right there. Uh, boom. So, you know, not, not adding heaps of structure to those eyes, keeping them a little bit more like uh, cartoony eyes, manga eyes, comic booky eyes. Give him the... Uh, again, the sort of knitted, furled brow. Uh, but again, this guy will give some bigger, kind of, sort of stronger more aggressive eyebrows. Um, and it is important to understand, you know, like how much of the structure you're going to leave in your drawing, you know, uh, if you're drawing very realistically, you, you leave a lot of this structure in, you know, this, this kind of helps you, you know, you use this stuff um, extensively. If you are trying to, you know, create a bit more of a cartoony look, often what happens is, you know, we, we still use the structure, 
but you know we kind of often place more iconic features where you know we would sometimes you know maybe draw things a little bit more right so you know if we were drawing these eyes realistically you know we'd think about the form we would uh, you know try and construct them and understand all the normal anatomical construction concepts that go into drawing eyes in this case i'm sort of replacing that a little bit with just uh you know some sort of cartoony basically eyes like that you know and and uh you know that will obviously change depending on you know where we view it from but that's a stylistic choice but even though i prefer to do that with the eyes that doesn't mean that you know if i'm on a project that you know needs me to render them out i can do that as well because i understand this the structure and uh yeah you got freedom You know, when, when we're first figuring this stuff out, I keep saying it because I, I think that's, you know, the most important sort of message if you're, you know, looking at, like, how, how do we actually apply this stuff? Um, is it's a mix. You know, it, it gives us a good little starting off point. Um, and, and, but, you know, you, you kind of need to know how much of that you're going to use. And uh, there's no rules, you know. You, you don't have to... use anything in particular again pretty basic you know not going to push the character designs or anything like that in in this case we're just kind of thinking about you know Drawing typical fantasy stuff as a as a way to draw uh, as a way to sort of learn some drawing, right? Uh, again, you know, we could try and make the characters a little bit more interesting, but again, that's probably uh, a different sort of video. Yeah, so there you go. A little bit of uh, sort of you know sketching to get started. And what we'll do next is you know just try and maybe you know expand a little bit more on the structure and sort of explain some of those concepts that are that are going into kind of sketching like this before we get started with this um, you know if you want a little bit more advice on drawing heads you can check out my free guide that goes over and is meant to help you with your head construction it just goes over the top five head mistakes that i think people often make when they're constructing heads using you know methods like the the loomis method but just drawing heads in general and it's meant to help you fix and solve those top five issues and basically you know draw better heads so go check that out it's free the the link is in the description so what we'll do here is again you know maybe start with something a, a little bit kind of bigger and i'm just gonna you know go with a three-quarter one for this uh, maybe in some follow-up videos I can we can draw things in in a little bit more of a interesting angle but I thought this would be a good way to essentially explain a lot of the um, you know what's going on so again I'm starting with that same structure uh, but you see again there's a few things that are going on I'm not you know going in there and you know drawing in all of that stuff all of those lines Right, so if we think about this might be that sort of view from the side, right? This might be that view from the front. Now, I've just sort of put in the lines that I need and I'm kind of tracing the ones that I don't. So here, right, if I was to draw this up the top here, yeah, all right. Um, typically what we should be doing is, again, constructing it out. And this often is, again, a good example of where the mix of practice right and what we actually do sort of meets the idea of sort of drawing education so when we are you know learning drawing often the best way to explain it is to draw all of these things is to construct it and to think uh, you know as analytically and as completely as possible the actual application is you know as i often say is, is a little bit more messy a little bit more sort of different so the features that i'm often trying to find are the center line and i am sort of chopping off the side of that head all right so if we look from the, the front right we're chopping off the side that's a big part of that sort of loomis construction 
system. But uh, again, you know, it's it's not actually that. I don't feel like that's often really that important. What I am trying to find is these cheekbones, right? So we're going to have some sort of cheekbones on the front, and we're going to have you know a, a cheekbone on the side. Obviously, here we're going to have right a big sort of dwarven nose, and the goal there is to find those one. Right, what's it going to be a little bit lower here? Right, we've got one, two, and three. Right, so we've got one, two, three proportions, and that sort of goes from again about the hairline to the brow ridge, or you know, basically like between the between the eyes. There we've got one, and then where we have the bottom of the nose is another basically the same proportion there we transfer that down we do another one and then we do another one and this bottom one goes from the bottom of the nose right the third proportion of the face goes from the bottom of the nose to the chin right and so there we have the same sort of thing we've got one right two three and it really means you know one of the things you can kind of look at is the mouth is kind of sort of in, you know, in hitting distance of the bottom of that sphere, right, when you're looking at it sort of front on. Obviously, if the head is tilted, right, if the head is kind of tilted and we're sort of still looking, you know, front on at it, that sort of won't be the case, right? The mouth will kind of be, uh, again, from the side, it'll be at that same spot, but again, we won't sort of visually see it hitting the bottom there. So again, uh, you've got to consider these measurements as being, you know, from the, the head kind of being very static and upright. So, again, just drawing this stuff so we can kind of explain it as we go, but, but that's kind of what I'm finding. The other sort of points that I find are really useful are the brow ridge, right? So we sort of draw, right, if you think about from the side where that is, it's kind of this one. If you look at the front, right, it's kind of this one. And I also really like to find, if we think about that, as kind of dividing where the side is. Well, right, that's where this line is. <coughs> the thing that I find quite useful is just where that point, the jaw changes direction. It's basically the corner of the jaw transfer that over somewhere there All right and so we have a rough construction like that again I'm keeping it faint so that it's faint now the center line is what defines a lot of the the form so what you're typically going to have is we're trying to define what the dimensionality outwards is so that you can see the dimensionality of that brow ridge there is helping me to define again this line here and then obviously we're going to have a nose here and then we're going to have the sort of mound of the mouth and then the chin here so we're having these structures now you know this all looks pretty boring right but again if i'm doing it this goes pretty quick you know when I, when i'm doing these sketches here you know that stuff kind of happens and disappears you know it's like 10 seconds 20 seconds and then that's gone they're there if i need them um, so what I'm trying to find by that center line is to manage this dimensionality, right? Bam, right? And, and figure out what's happening here. And again, I'm giving him like, you know, bigger nose, right? Because again, that's kind of the, the, the dwarf way. But again, probably what I could do is again, sort of make sure it sort of sticks out further this way but doesn't actually, um, you know, stick down too much that way. But that's basically what I'm trying to find. So again, we put in the mound of the mouth. That helps us to find some of those other anatomical points. We still have the cheekbones. Now, not a lot of these features at this point are really solid, right? Like the cheekbones are not representing a line that is going to end up in the final drawing. They're, they're giving me a good indication of where right where the rough form will go 
So they're more indications of proportion. The important thing is that I sort of get them the right size. And w this really helps me personally to make sure I include the cheekbone. Because again, I just tend to have a habit of like not including that. And I think it can be just a, a useful sort of feature to have. Um, it, it basically helps to define this line, which is often quite important in defining character. Let's rough in a neck. We'll give it a real kind of bull neck for the dwarf. Transfer that over there. And we can think about where that clavicle is. Now, typically, the sort of uh, clavicle, right, the sort of uh, bottom of the neck is one of those proportions below the chin. Right, so if we think about um, from the front, right, we've got one proportion, two proportion, three proportion, and we just sort of take another one of those proportions and go down, right, and that sort of becomes essentially where the neck goes. Same thing here, we take the same proportion, right, one, two, three, four, again, we're going to start to run into that, but it's going to be sort of somewhere here. So I'm doing the same thing here. One, two, three, somewhere there. All right, and that's where that's where sort of the the collarbones are going to be. Again, traps are going to come here. Shoulders, shoulders. We don't really worry about that. We're just drawing a face, but good to know that sort of proportional stuff. Next step, again, we're drawing a dwarf would be to kind of figure out the nose, right? And the way I kind of like to think of the nose is almost if, whoop, can't see that one, right? If we sort of think about, okay, we've got like a curved plane, right? What I'm trying to draw is like sort of, if we imagine we sort of cut the nose off, right? So if you look at it from the side, right? You imagine there is sort of a nose there, but if we sort of cut it off, what sort of shape, right, if you sort of think about, again, just drawing it so that's super clear, right, here we've got a nose, right, what kind of shape does it leave on the face? That just helps me think about where that structure starts. And then what I sort of do is essentially like a simple geometric, geometric construction from there where we take that sort of shape and again you could sort of imagine that if we do a blocky version of it you could imagine that as being right we have that sort of sticker or you know painted on version of what that would look like and then I'm just going to construct right some simple geometry on top of that so we start with that and then, again, construct out. Now, this is probably the most important thing that I think is, is really good to understand is this is a really good way to explain what's happening. It's a good way to visualize the blockiness and the simplicity of what's happening in my head. It's not often the actual process that I use to derive the shape of the nose. I'm much more likely to do it a little bit more like this, where we have the surface and when I kind of say yep I want it to kind of be here but what I'm actually going to do is kind of just try and mass in how big I want it to be as sort of like a shape I'm like yeah I kind of want a shape like this now I have to find the shape or the silhouette of that now I can actually go in and, and sort of maybe try and find a center line there right so here you'd sort of say well I could figure that center line out here here I'm kind of, again, I'm finding that form, right? And I'm putting in some of those secondary form markers, right? And we, I'm sort of, you know, slowly building what the structure of that kind of big nose would be. But if you understand the structure and you understand the proportion, you understand how they work, you can kind of start here, you can start there, you can start with a shape, you can kind of start by just kind of you know, sort of mashing, massing in a, you know, a fun, you know, form. And, and again, you know, you, you can sort of derive solidarity from that later. 
once you understand how to draw geometric forms, this sort of opens up to you and, and it becomes a lot easier to kind of build structure. And again, that's because we can always easily define shape. This is often the, the one I kind of like to use, right? We can have sort of similar, right? Similar kind of blobs, but it really is a matter of sort of how we define the shading, right? Or the shape there that kind of tells us like, what is that shape in terms of form? And so, you know, you can kind of start with either, right? Depending on how we view that, you, you, can, you can derive form from shape or shape from form. If you don't understand structure and you try and just sort of draw noses, you'll often find you end up with a nose that has no structure. It might have an interesting shape. It doesn't exist in three dimensions and it becomes very, very challenging to figure out like, how does it fit in with the rest of the features? So, again, the idea here is I, I sort of figure out where it is and, and then what I'm actually going to sort of do is, again, sort of try and figure out what is that, if we think about the nose, what, what I'm sort of doing is, you know, if you sort of think about like a nose, it's kind of one, right, it's like one sort of eggplant shape with like another sort of eggplant shape, right? Basically a phallic shape, <laughs> let's be honest. And... um you know, I, I'm sort of th trying to find that sort of initial shape, right? That sort of silhouette, right? Of what I want that to be like. And again, what we can do is we can ideate, you know, I come up with different ideas and thoughts for like what that line would be. And again, there's no center line here. That's the outline, right? So this is the outline at that point. The center line is going to be somewhere in here. But what I'm after is the fun outline or the shape that will actually be created. So from that, I'm then going to sort of figure out, well, I know the center line is going to start from here. And here we can kind of think about, again, building some structure to it. Again, modifying it a little bit and sort of adding, right, those secondary, again, sort of the flanges of the nose, right? And we can sort of build it that way. And uh, again, you know, that's where you know, we can sort of think about it and, you know, try and make it as fun as possible. Now, I, again, I really, it really sort of needs to, to jut out quite a bit, right? And again, good to make these kind of quite big. Again, let's add some sort of rhythms here. Again, I just find that, you know, adding in those little rhythms and things is a really good way to kind of define the space and figure out what's going to happen. The problem is also with doing Loomis constructions and stuff is, is stuff often looks quite static and kind of rubbish, right? So when you're practicing this and you're trying to get good at it, you, you draw a lot of sort of boring characters, right? But the idea is this is a muscle, right? We build that muscle. You just keep lifting, keep lifting, build this muscle a little bit every day again. 10%, 20%, 30% a day, depending on how sort of hardcore you are. And uh, again, spend most of your time just kind of applying it, you know, drawing fun things, playing around with kind of how it relates to, to, to people. You know, the amount of times I actually do this in, in the day is zero, you know, because again, I've done a fair bit of it before, but also because, you know, um, once you kind of understand those basics, you can just sort of draw stuff and play around with those same things. So... Again, you know, this guy probably will look a little bit static, I guess, is my sort of point. That's what I'm trying to make. <laughs> um, kind of laying the laying the groundwork for my own mediocrity. Um, but honestly, like a lot of people, I feel like feel that, you know, like you, you start off saying, like, oh, that looks like a cool thing. And then you try it and yeah, you, you sort of draw all these static, stiff, boring faces. Um, yeah, that's kind of what happens. You know, it, it's not a recipe for you know, the most character initially, it's a way to kind of understand structure. So again, let's see if we can add a bit of structure there. Just sort of roughing in, again, thinking about perspective, lining stuff up. I kind of know, again, horizon line is going to be boom, 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 horizon line, somewhere around that sort of eye level. And uh, again, that means that as we sort of transgress down here, right, we're going to see 
more and more of the top of stuff. Whereas as we go here, boom, boom. Right, we're going to start to see the, the top of stuff right, as we transfer down here just as something that's you know useful to visualize and again if you know once we're down here we're really going to start to see the top of uh, anything and that'll be useful to you know visualize essentially sort of what's happening yeah sorry there's one down here that i just drew that you can't see on screen there so again horizon line is uh, is it important to put in for characters you know that's a perspective thing not really but you know it, it defines you know maybe you know some of the perspective going here um, if you do want things to have like a bit of a you know a bit more um, you know grounding or exaggeration that the foreshortening and the the, the, the feeling of um, space and, and you being relative to this character is enhanced the more sort of perspective you add uh, but I normally don't worry too much about that all right uh, I, I it, and by worry I mean I, I'm not putting the lines in. I'm not really thinking about exaggerating that grid, but understanding where the horizon line is and again where we see things relative to the horizon line is really important. But you don't have to draw it in. You just have to kind of know roughly where it is. All right, so we're going to have some eyes here. Um, again, we'll, we'll sort of rough them in to kind of figure out what's happening. Again, you can see here, right? I have this line. Right, this is the line of the brow. Right, as I said, we draw that brow line in there. We've got the brow ridge, right? Boom, boom, right? Boom, boom. And then that gives us some good structure, right? To basically create the, the brow ridge. Putting a bit of this stuff in there. And... I'm just truing this up because I was like, yeah, it actually, actually doesn't work that well, what I was doing. Um, all right, so again, putting in some of that brow, realizing again, remembering I've got a helmet here, which is sort of good to remember. And again, thinking about how that sort of structure is going to work. But it's it's these things that allow me to you know, understand how these lines go. So here we're going to have, again, line four. Line for those eyes, and we can think about, again, maybe having some sort of droopy eyebrows. Not for any reason. Just because, again, you know, fantasy things are kind of quite fun to draw because they, you know, give you a lot of opportunity to, again, exaggerate. So we got cheekbone here, cheekbone here. All right, I reckon that could probably come out a little bit more. And again, we can round that off if we want. Now, I guess the next sort of tricky thing with dwarves that we need to kind of consider is the moustache, right? What's happening there? And uh, again, here's where we can we can do some other sort of little quick examples to talk about that. Let's sharpen this pencil, hey? Sharpen. Boom. Boom, boom. It's a bit better. I always like to kind of blunt it a little bit so it's not super stabby sharp. All right, so here we've got, again, same proportions, rough. All right. Dwarf, giant nose, bump, bump. Big brow ridge. Chin here, right? Mound of the mouth here. Jaw. Let's find that center, right? It's going to help us find that brow ridge there, right? Boom. Right, so you can see how, again, putting in those marks is helping me find 
that stuff again. Neck ends there. Right. Now, how do we do the moustache? Well, again, what we're trying to do is, is use that same form idea. So we can see from the side, right, that again, if we do have a moustache, it's going to sort of come out. Right, and you can sort of look at where the lips might be here, right, bottom lip might be here. And then we're going to have sort of the chin and, and the, the hair kind of, you know, is going to sort of come from here. Now, again, there's a million different types of beards and things you could draw. I, I'm just sort of using this as, as an example, right. But what we're after is, again, bump, bump, this line, this line, and this line in perspective. That's kind of what we're, we're there to do. And so this is where it can really help you to, you know, draw out those lips a little bit. Again, even though we might end up deleting them, right, they are going to sort of help us because we know that that moustache is going to sort of mirror the line of those, right, but it's going to sort of eject out so we can, again, draw that center line and think about where this is, right, so this is coming out, out, right, and then... Right, we can kind of see where that form comes out. Well, so again, I'm drawing it in a really sort of stylized, you know, sort of drawing teachery way. It's important to understand again that's just mostly for clarity, you know, so you can kind of see what's going on there. Um, but that's the basic idea, you know, and and then. Uh, again, let's start by doing the bottom bit as well. So here we've got the bottom of the lip. That's typically where we're going to see right, that sort of beard coming out. And, and this is where, again, you can kind of play around with some of these shapes, try and sort of feel out right where you want them to be. But a, a really good tool, again, is to just kind of, you know, mass in some of those shapes let's try and make sure they're symmetrical right they're sort of lining up like if he sort of has handlebar sort of mustache bits over here let's try and make sure they line up and uh, again let's try and sort of mass in or figure out you know how big this beard is actually going to be all right let's just kind of um, again, think about, uh, again, good to think about also the center line of what's underneath there. Right. Right. I, if he sort of had pectoral muscles and stuff, right, we'd have a lot of sort of structure under here. Right. Might also have, again, dwarven. Bump. Uh, silly World of Warcraft shoulder pads, basically, <laughs> that don't make any sense. Boom. Boom. Um, so you can see again, I'm doing a mix. I, I'm kind of like, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm kind of edging up on it. I, I'm sort of like, yeah, let's like, what's it going to look like? This is another really important skill to, to have when you're drawing. You know, you, you don't want to try and get there too quick. Um, I feel like often we, we kind of like, you know, you kind of end up with, oh, it's a bit of stuff here I haven't quite figured it out and we want to like bridge that gap we want to make the drawing work it's really important to know when to do that and when to kind of sit back a bit and just figure stuff out again like where is everything what's going on you know if his beard is kind of lying against the chest right how does that work again we can kind of visualize that from right got sort of shoulders boom, silly shoulder pads boom Right, and the beard is kind of right, sort of resting on top of that chest. That's kind of what I'm trying to visualize here. Right, how does that work? And uh, again, it's also good to think about you know where the hair underneath there is gonna sort of work. Let's sort of try and you know think about some. Uh, Norse Valkyrie style helmet side bits and again a you know helmet back All right so again there's a helmet here and this is sort of below now again I'm drawing through here so this is the draw through 
Um, I said there's a couple of sort of really, really key important parts there. One is to just think in three dimensions, right? So just think in three dimensions. The second is to practice drawing through. So what we want to do is just make sure we are actually, you know, constructing those things, um, you know, and, and again, drawing through and saying like, well, I know where the, you know, the structure of the face is, that's going to help me to draw these features. And, uh, you know, the last one I had there was sort of the center line, which again, is just understanding the center line is sort of trying to visually represent this sort of profile view, right? This is the center line and we use it to keep us honest, right? So we went from the front, it's just boom, that's the center line. From the side, the center line is that. From three dimensions, it's this sort of thing that, um, again, kind of goes boom, boom, right? Nose, mustache, right? Bottom mustache, right? It's this kind of line. Dun, 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 right? And we're just rotating it and figuring out where it is. Which again is a skill, right? You gotta you gotta build it. You gotta you gotta work towards that. Um, but that's the idea. And uh, again, you know, I'm not gonna take this, you know, too too much further, you know, because you, you probably sort of get get the basic idea. Um, but uh, yeah, again, good to think about. You know, maybe there's some sort of plaits hanging down underneath, kind of beard. We can and again, we got center line on the chest, right? We know sort of where that plait would be on the other side. Boom, and uh, you know, then we've sort of got the the handlebar mustache sort of things, and we got this kind of beard, which I think I sort of want to have again. Same thing, the side here, right? This is kind of being pulled away, right? And it's sort of into this beard, and then right, this beard is kind of flowing. Now, at this point, again, um, I guess you sort of have two options. One is, you know, you can really just work construction drawing like this and then do another version of the drawing over the top. If you're doing this digitally, you can just make a new layer, right? Do your finished drawing on top of this. And that way you can kind of be hack away at this as much as possible. You know, keep going, keep going, keep going. And if you totally mess it up, that's fine. You can also do that traditionally uh, with a light box. That's, you know, typically how... You know, I used to do it, you know, when I was drawing traditionally. Again, I'm sketching and I demonstrate traditionally because I think it's actually much better. You can see my hand. But, uh, you know, I, most of my drawing is digital these days when I'm working professionally. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, but you can do the same thing traditionally just with light boxes. You do your sketchy version, you construct it all out. You've got all these stupid lines everywhere. Okay, that's fine. We just put a light box on it, um, you know, and, and then trace the lines that we want to take forward. So many, many options for how to take this and move it forward. The other thing you can do, again, um, you know, if, if, if you're not maybe going for the most technical, um, you know, sort of version of that, uh, you know, you don't need 100%, you know, fully clean, perfect lines, is you can just do, you know, what I'm sort of doing there, where, you know, where we sort of take... Um, some of the some of the graphite off the page and and then we sort of try and you know have another go right sort of find the the, the stronger lines there again it's like i, I kind of like the idea of being able to see that little lip there but again often when people have got those m epic mustaches you kind of can't see the um the, the bottom lip there so yeah again we can kind of you know, try and take out some of that structure and so again there's kind of the center line of that that I kind of ended up with All right there's the other line of this thing All right we can probably put a bit of shading in there we can key and spot a few little black bits to help us Right. Don't. Don't. But yeah, that's basically it. Um, yeah, you know, again, the you know, you just keep working at it. But uh, you know, I think for this sort of little demonstration, that's probably what I was, you know, really trying to just get across is just talk about some of that structure and you know how we how we take that um, Loomis method. Uh, you know, 
analytical figure drawing, um, constructive anatomy tradition, and, and we sort of apply it to actually doing stuff. Because, again, most of the videos I see out there are people copying from reference, you know, and it's like that's, to me, kind of pointless, right? Um, using using the the Loomis method because uh, you, it, it's there to help you construct figures from your imagination. Um, you know, that's kind of how it's, um, you know, sort of, um, designed uh, as I sort of understand it and then obviously you know you, you, you can mix that with sort of looking at reference from a process standpoint but you know that is the strength of it is, is being able to sort of play around with composition and and uh, those kind of things uh, on your own so um, yeah anyway that's you know that's how I sort of use it uh, I just kind of think about these things as I'm doing this you know as I'm sort of sketching and uh, yeah same sort of process this one's just a little bit more detailed as i said if you want to improve your head construction you know this kind of stuff is interesting but you want a few more tips check out my free guide that goes over the top five head construction mistakes that um, artists tend to make when they're starting out link will be in the description for that but uh, yeah other than that that's all i got for this one let me know if these uh, little drawing exercise demos are useful whether this helps you understand the concept of how the Loomis method or you know any other constructive anatomy stuff actually applies. Uh, again, it's not about drawing blocky, you know, boring people with no features. It's about drawing really, really fun things, and it's very, very useful, and uh, I use it every single day. But other than that, I'll catch you around. Happy drawing.